and there, there are people who are, are funnier than I am who are probably going to spend a lot of time doing it. I think this shit is, I mean, it's it's horrifying what this means for Argentine people. Um, what well, this guy is is a cartoon character brought to life. It's 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 incredible. Um, but this is something that at, at a certain point, um, no offense to them, um, but the kind of uh, um, Daily Show, John Oliver style, wow, look how insane the right wing is. It starts to ring a little hollow because we've had Trump, we've had Bolsonaro, right. um, we've, we're having Millet. Time and time again, like this is a character that we're going to be dealing with. And I think, um, you know, nothing wrong with laughing at them or, or fucking around and you know, taking the piss. But um, at a certain point, we have to start talking about the reasons that this kind of thing is happening. Because, you know, Argentina, like many, many other countries, is dealing with the consequences of, of, a, of a kind of global regime, of a global model that is in permanent crisis. Argentina, like many countries, is struggling with recession, a poverty re rate that's around 40 percent, hyperinflation, uh, which is certainly no small part of, of the reason that he was elected, um, tremendously high debt, which has been a, uh, a constant theme of Argentine politics for a while, um, along with rising crime. And yes, you know, the Peronist coalition, um, you know, tried to do another move to maintain legitimacy, failed here. Uh, Massa tried to distance himself um, from maybe the more left wing or center left parts of the Peronist uh, coalition. But as we said, lost uh, 56 to 44 uh, percent here. And as you were just saying, Matt, um, no doubt about it, um, if, if people have been watching my coverage or this program, um, particularly TMBS in early left reckoning days, we were talking a lot about what, what I was calling the vulture capitalist class. And Argentina is a country that is highly indebted. Uh, you have very powerful institutions that are trying to prey on that debt. Um, and as people might remember, McCree, um, the president before Fernandez, um, basically sold the country out to dry, took, taking on uh, ridiculous amounts of debt uh, for the country, which the country was forced to sort of service during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And you saw the Fernandez government, which fell into trap after trap, failure after failure. This is no defense of, of them. Um, you know, but basically being constrained by a bunch of wealthy financiers in, in the United States and abroad saying, hey, we want our money. I don't give a shit if that means that people are going to go without food. Um, but that is the the noose that is brought by the global financial system, which plays a massive role in countries all across uh, South America, but particularly in Argentina. Um, and, you know, one of the big things that, uh, that, that Millet has sort of promised to do um, is to replace the peso with the United States dollar, not just peg the peso to the U.S. dollar, but to use the U.S. dollar as the currency of Argentina. Um, the problem with this is that the Argentine central bank does not have enough dollars to be able to do that, right? Not to get too in the weeds about these kind of things, but if you want to replace currency, you have to have a currency reserve. They don't have a currency reserve to be able to do that. Because most of the U.S. dollars that they have are used to pay off debts that are denoted that, that are denoted in the U.S. dollar, right? So the, the promise, and we'll get into maybe some of the, the issues there in in a moment, um, but like they don't even have the fiscal capacity to be able to do that because they can't print U.S. dollars. Um, and he also does not have a majority in Congress. So this is somebody who's going to come and 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 be loud, um, who is sort of. Uh, brought into victory because of the inflation crisis, because of the economic mismanagement of the country, and because a lot of the kind of center-right parties basically lined up behind him at the end of the day. Um, we have this this clip here, Matt. If, maybe we can play this first, and then I have I have some more things to sort of say about the economic situation. But like, I, I think that there's, there's just two things to really note if you're trying to take a top line from this is that this guy is going to deliver even more dark days to Argentina. Um, so nothing that we're saying right here is not is, is to try to dissuade somebody who's feeling distraught or depressed or upset about what's going on. Um, but but uh, the, the hope that I'm trying to sort of lay out for people is to orient your frustration at the right forces. Um, because, you know, these guys, like it's just like in the United States, like Trump, Devastating, devastating figure, did tremendous damage to people all across this country and all across the globe. A bad figure, somebody who did tremendous amounts of damage. But something happens when these people become avatars of dysfunction, in, in particularly in liberal sets, um, where instead of sort of looking at the structural issues that are causing decline, that are causing devastation, that are causing pain uh, for people, well, instead, oh, if only the crazy guy wasn't in charge, um, then things would be better. No, 
the crazy guy is in charge because of the failures of the establishment powers. But anyways, let's 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 establish a little bit more of this guy. We have we have this clip here um, to sort of talk about the the kind of bizarre, contradictory nature of a figure like that. So yeah, you're talking about this Tucker Carlson clip. Yes. So yeah, um, just to get a sense of like, oh, let's learn about this libertarian. Is he going to have any interesting uh, sort of orthodox opinions about stuff? Well, here he is on abortion, Taco Tucker. You oppose abortion. Why? Bueno, porque como liberal, eh, o sea, liberal libertario, aclaro, porque en inglés... Eh, I'll just say, uh, he's saying, because of someone who believes in libertar liberalism, and then he talks about, like, I'm a libertarian, and liberalism is a different thing, you know, that that's the way he's going on. Liberal, es distinto. Eh, eh, así que lo voy a decir como so libertario. So let me say he's a libertarian. Nosotros creemos que... El liberalismo es el respeto irrestricto del proyecto de vida. Unrestricted propio, respect for the lives of others. Basado en el principio de no agresión. Non-aggression principle. Defensa del derecho a la vida, la libertad y a la propiedad. Por lo tanto, adhiriendo a las ideas de la libertad, básicamente una de las ideas fundamentales es defender el derecho a la vida. Right to defend life. A favor de I'm in favor of the right to life. Después hay una justificación desde el plano de vista de la ciencia, scientific la ciencia justification, naturales, digamos, que es el hecho de que la vida comienza Life begins a conception. en el momento de la fecundación. Y en ese mismo momento se genera un nuevo ser en evolución, ¿sí? con un ADN distinto. Es decir, es cierto que la mujer tiene derecho sobre su cuerpo, pero ese niño dentro de la mujer no es su cuerpo. Pero el child is not her body. Es decir, el niño no es su cuerpo. Por lo tanto, el aborto es un asesinato agravado por el vínculo. And so an abortion is an asesinato. Uh, the Argentinian far right leader says, uses the word assassination. Again, 30,000 people, I think is a conservative estimate for the amount of people that were killed by the uh, military in the dirty war. Uh, and those were supposedly like communist infiltrators. And uh, no, those a lot were just teachers and uh, union leaders and stuff like that. So um, to say that women uh, uh, having abortions are assassinating their kids, I think is that's uh, libertarians, right? Like this, it, it's funny how, like, what kind of liberty are we talking mm -hmm. about? Is it? Oh, actually, the state does have an interest in policing your reproductive decisions, including maybe treating it like a murder, maybe maybe getting the state involved for like a murder prosecution because you didn't want to carry that pregnancy to term. That is this type of libertarianism. Just another brief one. Um just to point this up, uh, you know, maybe he'll have, we're seeing a lot, we've been talking about this with Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro, a lot in the right wing of, uh, and, and who knows how toxic it's going to get on the, uh, the anti-Israel side. But, you know, maybe we shouldn't, maybe we should be isolationist with regards to Israel-Palestine. Well, of course, uh, Malay here. Uh, waving a giant <laughs> uh, Israel flag. Uh, he will not be. Uh, that is not his position. Uh, nor is it, uh, I believe he is pro uh, standing with Ukraine as well. Uh, so really like a libertarian, but kind of like behind the times and not made for this new era of more maybe online orthodoxy to, to go back to what he said. Um, but yeah, I mean, Liber like libertarian, but also pro-Israel is such a fucking ridiculous position to have. Uh, you are in support of the UN, uh, uh, um, like creating a set, a partitioning uh, a place uh, for a settler colonial project enforced by billion, hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayer money, just to name the U.S. Yeah, libertarian, my ass. It's nice not a serious. Like it's not a serious philosophy, right? Uh, you know, the the right to life, except for millions of Palestinians. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. It's 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 it it falls apart uh, quickly. You know, libertarians. Um, I think in in general, probably is one of the least serious ideologies out there. It's a nitpicky ideology because functionally, um, what it represents, what it has always sort of represented, is an un. Um, is a uh, is is a defensive. Is it's just a very clear full throated defense of power. Um, and he thinks that the powerful um, should rule and that the rest of the people should just sort of get in line. Um, and again, you know, I think Jean Bajelon said it best when, you know, the trick of the right these days 
is to try to make the powerful seem oppressed. Um, and that's exactly what this 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 guy is all about. Um, shouldn't be unsurprising to anybody that this guy's a big crypto booster <laughs> as well. Um, that, that's the thing I've been wondering since I heard he, he wants to you know go onto the U.S. dollar. Like, is he is this just because crypto is making money? Tanking? You know, look, yeah. crypto. I mean, this may be a topic for a different day. It definitely is, but um, not looking good for crypto in this moment because I just saw a news report that said Hamas and ISIS and uh, uh, several other Islamic uh, groups have been using it. And the thing is, is I don't think we're going to see a lot of the Bitcoin guys tout that as a use because yeah. anecdotally i've seen a lot of them come into my replies saying i'm anti-semitic for supporting palestine mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a weird little thing and it's also gonna a good test case of like if hamas is for instance uh using that significantly they're going to kill it <laughs> like the, they um so you know in you know i i it is one thing because the WikiLeaks was the other example prior to that, where a a, a, uh, a use for that technology uh, was actually, I think, counter the world powers. And I think, on balance, it doesn't do that. So I think that's why it's tolerated. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but I also think like all that shit's really down, and I haven't seen much coming back. And and not to ramble too much, but AI is also struggling. So mm. uh, yeah. But, you know, in closing, we'll just say this. What is there to rage against? What is there to rage mm. against if you are somebody who believes in in, in free markets and privatization? Uh, the Alex, Malvinas uh, Islands. <laughs> yes, sir. Islands. Yeah. <laughs> Which I have seen some funny things about, uh, you know. Um, I mean, this is, again, this is somebody who uh, praises Margaret Thatcher, which people did think was also going to get him in trouble, obviously, uh, for anyone who remembers the Falkland Wars. Um but you know the, the the situation is is bad enough in Argentina. He was able to get away with that. Um, but Alex uh, Hochuli, who's a former guest of this program, a uh, great writer, host of the Bunga Cast, uh, which I listen to regularly, I wrote a really great piece in the Unheard, in Unheard, on his election, uh, saying, "quote If neighboring Brazil's experience with Jair Bolsonaro is anything to go by, the administration will be more conven- more conventionally neoliberal in economic matters." while radicalism will be expressed in the cultural field, calling the the Pope, quote, a lefty son of a bitch and antagonizing the country's second largest trading partner, China, by saying he won't work with communists, may may foreshadow some of his antics in government. And I think that's a very astute point because here's the thing with Malay. What is there for him to rage against? While he likes to sit around and talk about collectivists in the far left and the damage that they have done, Argentina is a test case in neoliberal economics. Um, More than anything that we're seeing right now, uh, Argentina is an example of the failed neoliberal uh, project. From the debt vultures that we were talking about a little while ago that have been strangling the country, preventing it from being able to embark on any kind of serious industrialization um, or social programs, to the failure of of the political center and the center left of the Peronists, um, Argentina um, matches much of the world's uh, history when it comes to development, with the 90s being a period of mass disinvestment from public industry and of mass privatization of state-owned industries, which led to, surprise, surprise, economic devastation uh, for the nation and reliance on huh, finance capital. For somebody who believes in, 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 in the free market, Argentina is a great example of what happens when you are over-reliant on finance capital, when you are over-reliant on neoliberalization, when you are over-reliant on the market to solve all social ills in a society. And let's just say he gets his way for a second, right? That there's mass disinvestment in the public economy, what is left, um, or just government um, in general. um, And he's successful in creating an over-reliance on on US dollars, right? If he's able somehow um, to not just peg the peso to the US dollar, um, but actually to use the United States dollar as the currency of the country of Argentina. What will we see, Matt? Well, it will be something that mirrors exactly what Argentina's economic development over the past uh, three decades have been. Dependence on export, limiting industrialization of the country, and the, and the reliance on resource um, extraction and agricultural exports, right? So a lack of industrialization in, in the uh, in the economy. A reliance on resource extraction and on selling cheap beef, wine, and soybeans 
uh, to the United States and to other countries, right? Not really a model for economic success for everyday people. But again, this is not what Malay is running on or anything like yeah. that. Uh, in 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 all seriousness, um, you know, the promise break with these collectivists and all this kind of and this break with the the old model is nowhere to be found in in this platform. Instead, what we will see from him is a deepening of the neoliberal project, just like we got under Bolsonaro, just like we got under Trump, just like we saw in Italy, just like we're seeing in all of these kind of, quote, far right populist states um, and some money for the connected rich. And I mean, if there's anything you, else you want to say on Argentina in particular, you know, go ahead. But I will just say as, as a final note on this, the real thing that we should be noting is that with all these crises, in Argentina, in Brazil, in the United States, all across the globe. What we are left with is an incompetent center um, and a more fervent and radical right wing. Uh, but when it comes mm -hmm. to actual solutions to global decline, there's no real answer. Because what happens is you get these kind of bombastic figures in there who do culture war, who say crazy things um, and say, hey, you know, I'm going to get rid of the bad guys in government. Um, and what ends up securing itself in those nations? more devout version of neoliberalization, a more devout version of, of privatization, which has been the model of both the right-wing parties and of the center-left parties in the United States, across South America, across Europe, right? The thing that's bizarre about this kind of political moment that we're living through, Matt, is that, you know, with all of these things that sort of point to maybe an opening or a breaking point with the neoliberal consensus, the only answers that we have really seen come to power politically are just doubling down on neoliberalization. Um, and, you know, the center left plays a huge role um, in sort of maintaining the space for these far right figures. And the only real threat to them electorally so far, for the most part, has just been these far right figures. So it's maintain crisis on, under the center left, expand a crisis under the far right. And it's a really, really, really nasty and never ending uh, circle that the, the establishment certainly has no answers to and a very, very weakened left uh, that has turned away from labor and has turned to culture as its primary uh, battleground means that, you know, what we're sort of left with is a permanent passing of the baton uh, between two dangerous forces of the same uh, of, of the same ideological bent, which is more privatization, more neoliberalization and more damage to working people. Yeah, I mean. It's, uh, the, the example, it's just like the, everyone was counting on, oh, he, this is just, he's too wacky. So mm -hmm. the same sclerotic, arthritic, Peronist, like basically center left, center to center right, uh, administration will win. And it's like, there's only so long you can roll that dice. I mean, it was funny, you know, not to bring up random small Twitter accounts, but I did say, I won't say them by name. I'm not trying to be a coward. I just don't want to send everyone to harass some small account on Twitter. But somebody responded to uh, me retweeting this, this story being a bit like, you know, Jesus Christ, this is bad. Like, well, this is exactly, um, you know, what's coming for America if everybody doesn't sort of line up behind uh, Joe Biden again. It's like, no, this is exactly what happens when the only answer is like, oh, the far right super crazy. We just need to continue uh, destroying, uh, you know, allowing these countries to, to stagnate, stagnate and decline. Um, this is exactly what our future is like if, if your only answer to any crisis is what we need to do is lock arms and defend uh, the same kind of established order, uh, which has, you know, laid the groundwork for all these kind of permanent crises because the right won't even break. The, the, I mean, the thing that's so like, uh, like it's not even like I'm rooting for them. Don't get me wrong. It's that they are so. Anyone who is on the far right is a product of of of, of power and and capital, right? So they can complain about the cultural mores of of the left, right? And what they really mean by that is like the establishment, the, the, the neoliberals, etc. Um, but fundamentally, they want to see the same kind of inequities in society be maintained, right? The inequities of, of wealth, the inequities of, of political power for certain kinds of groups. So all that you see is these kind of really damaging, again, I'm not denying that they're damaging, extremely damaging, um, but continuation of what was already ongoing in society. Because the right has no answer to it because the right has no intention or desire to see these kind of things that are fundamentally broken in society be changed. So what we end up having is this, yeah, this bizarre game uh, where you have, again, the center left maintaining decline and, and the right accelerating it. Um, pretty, pretty nasty 
a situation. And the only answer is always is going to have to be revitalized uh, movement back to the people, which means supporting labor, supporting working class people and building up independent organizations that can challenge both the far right menace and uh, the, the, the center left pimps. Um, who maintain these these kind of damaging forces uh, with all of their glittering phrases in the same way that Malay is going to talk about collectivists, um, you know, and all these damaging folks. The the center does the same thing when they talk about extremists or whatever, right? Same kind of politics at the end of the day, and we have to break out. Yeah.